Well, again, thank you for being here today. Um, we're kind of a few words into our uh, seven words to change your life. We've just been kind of pulling out small words that make an impact in our life and, and learning to say these, accept them, live them out, and kind of so far we've been working through uh, yes and no and uh, enough last week, and today we're talking about wow, uh, and hopefully we can kind of just think about how good God is, and so I thought it'd be very appropriate with this word, um, I can't think of a better opportunity to reflect and remember what Jesus did on the cross for us, and so at the end of the service, uh, we're going to participate uh, in communion together. And just so you know, in case I forget to kind of kind of make this clear later on, you do not have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a member, member of any church, okay? It's not about any kind of denomination, whatever. Everyone is welcome to participate in the elements and remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. Amen? Good with that. So, um, so when was the last time you just kind of stopped and paused for just a moment and just thought to yourself or maybe verbalized out loud, wow. This is amazing. This moment in life is amazing. And so I was kind of thinking about, you know, back to my life. And we have those obvious, right? I mean, I, I can kind of think back when, when I asked Jesus into my life uh, at the age of 12 back in Georgia camp. And just that moment of, uh, even though I hadn't, you know, done a whole lot of wrong, you know, before 12, I still needed him in my life. And then just kind of those moments when he called me to preach at the age of 15 and a small uh, we were leasing a Seventh-day Adventist church, and I was on the back row as the evangelist in a revival was telling about his call into the ministry, and God said, that's what I want you to do, and I fought it for a few minutes, and, uh, and, and so obviously I finally surrendered to that, and here I am today. And so there's a lot of those moments, and then I started thinking about just, just life moments, right? Those moments where I was whopping, uh, mopping up the floor in the cafeteria at Bible College, and I look up and I see this beautiful brunette walking down the hallway and I said I wonder if she'll go out with me and about six months later I finally asked her out. no it took me a little less than that about a week later we went on our first group date and the rest is history I can still remember the time saw her walking down uh, Amy that is walking down um, on her wedding day and uh, and just that moment just uh, it's a great moment for me looking back and then there's just those various moments in life. Uh, if you're married, you know what I'm talking about, those moments where you just kind of have a glimpse of not just the past and what you've been through together, but you begin to dream a little bit and you think about the future and, and, and hopefully planning to be there together. And I think about little Trinity, um, you know, the first time. And I remember the, the moment there where I'm, I'm holding Trinity, and Amy's like, I want to see her. And she's stuck in the bed, right, instead of C-section. She's stuck. And I'm like, I'm just mesmerized, and I want to hog Trinity for myself, right? But Amy's the one who's gone through all the junk. But I couldn't contort myself to show her. And so it wasn't until later on that she actually got to meet Trinity. And so she was just scared to death because she said, what, what does she look like? I said, she looks like your dad. And so I don't know if that <laughs> scared or whatever. And so we had to kind of go, okay, yeah, that's good. All right, we're we're all good. And then just watching Trinity grow up, and now there's, there's those times where I see her, and it still surprises me. There's those times where she walks into the room, and I look up, and I go, I, I don't know what I'm expecting sometimes, but I'm not expecting an almost 16-year-old to walk through the house. I love to hear stories from you guys. I love to sit down um, and hear stories about God doing something in your life, transforming your life. I love to hear, and it sounds, I don't know if it doesn't sound morbid, right, to hear uh, the struggles, to hear what you're going through, because it means that God is, is transforming you. He is, he is changing you uh, from the inside out. And so as you begin to kind of think through your wow uh, and being in awe, and so then I began to kind of work through how can we lose our sense of awe and wonder. What happens as life goes on? Because it seems like the older we get, uh, the more we're in a relationship, the longer we're in a relationship, the longer we have kids, or the longer we have you know, a church community like this. Sometimes we can just kind of take things and people for granted so many times. And so as I was kind of researching for this, came across this article about babies. And, and you know, if, you, if you've had a baby or been around a baby, you know one of the first cool moments is when they begin to recognize their hands, right? And they're just kind of their hands, and they just spend, it seems like, hours just looking at their hands and trying to figure out. And, and we think it's cute, but really, what are they doing? They're, 
that's new. They, it, that's the first time they're noticing, and they're noticing that they actually move. And then there has to be something going on in their brain, like they're moving, and then at some point they begin to think, I'm causing this to happen. And so there's just those all cool moments that are going on in their brain. And then there's that moment where we get frustrated, right? Or that moment where they begin to pick up things and they begin to test gravity. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They're in the high chair, and they've got a fork, and it's usually filled with spaghetti or something nasty. And they, what do they do? They drop it. And what do we do? We're loving, submissive adults, right? <laughs> we pick it up, and we put it back, and we say, don't do that. And what do they do? They do that with toys. They do it with a lot of things. You begin to think, well, I'm, I'm frustrated with this. They need to stop, and, and, and scientists are figuring out what they're actually doing is, not just like with their hands where they're figuring out this is something brand new. They're also figuring out because gravity makes no sense to them. So they're thinking, I'm going to pick this thing up, I'm going to drop it, and it drops every time. Bonus, when I do that, Every adult in the room picks it up for me, so I don't have to do anything, right? I just drop it, so it then becomes a game. And so what scientists are calling is there are actually many scientists. These babies are. What are they doing? They're exploring the world around them. They're testing the elements. They're testing the boundaries. Oh, you don't want me to touch that? Watch me. What are the consequences if I touch that? What are you going to do if I touch this? Does no really mean no? What are we talking about? Who's in charge, right? And they're always testing. They're always pushing the elements. And so I go back to the original question. Why didn't we lose our sense of awe and wonder? I feel like one of the major reasons is because we become so comfortable in the circle we're in that we figured out this circle. We figured out this group. We figured out the world that we're in. And if we're not very careful, we rarely step out of that circle and see what God is up to beyond. And we don't stop enough and pause and reflect on what God is doing. So maybe in order to reignite a sense of wow, a sense of awe and wonder. Maybe we need, to, we need to be a little bit more intentional about stepping out into the world a little bit, being out of our comfort zone a little bit, acting on faith, and experiencing God in a fresh new way. So, three reasons, getting into our notes, three reasons we should live with a greater sense of awe and wonder. I'm going to work through these um, really quickly because I want us to have plenty of time to reflect and remember uh, the communion together. So if you're taking notes, number one, creation. Creation. Psalm 19, 1 says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. I, I loved, uh, Jennifer, I appreciate the song selection. It seemed like every song just kind of just tied in perfectly what we're talking about today. And, and again, kind of preparing for today, I found some, some cool things about the world, right, and how God orchestrated everything. And so maybe you'll find this interesting as I did. The earth is suspended in space, spinning about 100,000 miles per hour. Think about that for a second. That's how fast we're going. So as slow as my deacons were earlier, we're all moving really fast right now, okay? I mean, we're just spinning around. Rotating around the sun at approximately 67,000 miles per hour. So you think about it, we're spinning, and then we're spinning, okay? And so it's just the right speed and distance so that we don't fly off, or we're not so close that we don't burn up. How does that happen? How is it that it's the perfect speed, the perfect distance, there, it just isn't by chance, right? And there's somebody out there that would say, well, it, creation, it's no, it's not, it's just a, something banged and it happened. I've never seen anything bang and blow up and then come to order. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. So automatically if I say, okay, this, I show you an iPad, your question is going to be, how does that work and how is it designed? Because I didn't just throw all the mechanics down and the equipment and say, bang, there it is, it happened. No, we don't think like that. So to think that bang and it all happened i think what makes more sense and it's more reasonable and logical to think that there is a creator out there that had this master plan and he said i'm going to make stuff 
and it's going to work perfectly. Isn't that much cooler? Doesn't it make more sense to see it that way? Psalm 148, 3 through 6 says, Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you twinkling stars. Praise Him, skies above. Praise Him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for He issued His command, and they came into being. I love that. He just spoke, and He set them in place forever and ever. And I love this part. His decree will never be revoked. What does that mean for us? Quickly, what that means is, Every time we look up, every time we see the full moon, every time we hear of a star being formed, every time we think of a planet, every time we think of the solar system, every time we, we look within, every time we look around, as you're in the deer stand, and some of you, they, they may be taking advantage of creation this morning. I don't know where some people are, but they may be out there and they're probably taking advantage of creation and they're soaking it in, the fresh air and all of that. Who does that remind us of? What does that cause us to do? The first question I think it calls us to do is, how did this get here? How did I get here? And as believers, and those with faith in God Almighty, the one true God, it causes us and it should cause us to reflect on Him. Creation, every day, should cause us to have a sense of awe and wonder about how good and how powerful and how detailed our God is. Number two, uniqueness of every human being. Psalm 139, 139, 13 through 15 says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in, the, in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. So thinking about the body, just like we talked about the planets, here's some cool facts for you. Each day our hearts beat approximately 100,000 times. So how many miracles do you experience every day? 100,000 miracles. Circulating about 2,000 gallons of blood through 67,000 miles. Think about that. Just let it sink in for a second. 67,000 miles of veins and arteries and all the innards within you. All that's flowing through you right now. So if we just kind of take just a couple of seconds. I don't know what your pulse rate, your heart rate is for just a second. But if we just pause for a couple of seconds, three. There was probably about three miracles that just took place within your life. And that's not counting all the little things, right? That your brain is functioning, your heart is functioning, your lungs are functioning, everything's working up to code. God designed you just the way he wanted you. He took genetics and he mixed your mom and your dad and your grandparents on each side and generations and generations. And he put you together and he said, this is going to be amazing. Think about the first thing. Every child, baby Collier, baby Collier, every child comes out unique. Unique. The fact that God is not this, this mass manufacturing company and warehouse of producing human beings. According to Scripture, God Himself is overseeing in each mother's womb. He's overseeing every little detail. The color of your hair. The size of your head. <laughs> the amount of wrinkles you're going to have. Whether that head is going to be covered forever with hair. Right? What color hair? I'm not calling y'all out. You know who you are. All right, so all the hair, what color? When's that color going to turn gray? You know, what kind of body type? Are you going to be tall and slim? Or are you going to be short and stocky? What does that look like for you? Are you going to have the athletic gene? Are you going to have more of, a, of an intellect? Not that you can't have both, you know what I mean? But are you going to be more of musical talent? What is going to be what you bring to the table? Are you going to be a personality that's a little bit more reserved, a little bit more shy, a little bit more observation from beyond? Are you going to be that person? Person that walks in every room like hey I'm here everybody needs to know I'm here right and so God formed that person and that person drives this person crazy and vice versa 
right? They don't understand one another. But God designed each and every one of us, and he put us together, and he said, all right, you guys, you've got to get along, and you've got to love one another. You've got to see the good in each other, and you've got to see the good in yourself. But the enemy, the enemy is all about trying to explain away creation, explain away uniqueness, redefine who you are. What if we begin to kind of just see ourselves as God created us, just the way he wanted us with no mistakes, and begin to appreciate, not only am I supposed to love the good in each and every person, but I'm supposed to love the good in myself. Matt Pat Batterson wrote this, There has never been and never will be another you. You are unlike anyone who has ever lived. But that uniqueness isn't a virtue, it's a responsibility. Uniqueness is God's gift to you, and it's your gift to God. He designed you how He wanted you. You're to praise Him and serve Him just as you are. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do all the good things He planned for us long ago. So the question you have to work through and I have to work through is, am I good with how God made me and the purpose he's given to me? Number three, lastly, a changed life. I believe that our lives are filled with wow moments, whether we recognize them or not. I think each day provides a sense of awe and wonder that should cause us to think about God and should cause us to think about ourselves and connection to God and relation to one another. And so I reached out and I, um, this week and kind of asked if there's someone that, maybe a few people that had a few wow moments to kind of share that you wanted to share. I'm not going to attach names to these, but I just had a couple I want to share really quickly uh, before we kind of transition. One person said, the way that God has fit us perfectly into uh, into place here at, in Nacogdoches at New Hope Church has been overwhelming and beautiful. It's hard to leave something that you love doing, but we felt God was moving us to another chapter in our lives. All we could do was trust and obey, and He has been faithful. We are so thankful and stand in awe of God's provision for our family. Another person said, For years, every day seemed like a wow for me. My life seemed to be uh, mostly positive, and I was amazed each day at how God was blessing me. Although I continued to pursue God on the mountain, I somehow became accustomed to the good life, and without realizing it, I, fought, I, I lost focus of wow of Jesus. When my niece died, it started a cycle of letdown, heartbreak, disappointment, sadness, loneliness, and many other words I could list. I had forgotten the wow of what Jesus had done for me. The wow, that sweet fellowship with him. My wow had become the good things in my life, and I was not emotionally or spiritually prepared for what would happen to me. I was numb, going through the motions. I am thankful that my old wow was lost and then replaced with the wow of Jesus' unfailing love and patience with me. And then we had a gentleman experience a, a seizure recently and he wrote this what I was doing when I had my seizure which was praying it gave me the opportunity to witness to those that were caring for me about what God is doing for me in my life I pray that I will be in his hands or be his hands and his feet in this world that I recognize the opportunities that he gives me to serve him by serving others the events that took place that morning were not luck. They were not chance, but they were God's plan for my life. Philippians 4.13 reminds me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You have your own story. You have your own moments. But if it's been a while for you to say, wow, this is amazing. God, you're amazing. Maybe today needs to be a day that we just pause for a second and just look out. Just look up and look around. So the goal for us today is an increased awareness of what God has created us for and what God has created, uh, created for us and us for. Will you bow your heads in prayer? God, I thank you so much for your love and your mercy. 
your gentleness, your patience. It is so easy. In fact, it's way too easy for us to lose the wow of you, the awe and wonder. So forgive us when we fail to thank you. Forgive us when all we bring to you are petitions and problems. God, help us to be more intentional, to look up and to look around and to look within and be thankful and grateful for the goodness within us and the goodness around us. God, provide those moments for us and help us to pause and say, God, thank you. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, it's just us. No one's looking around for just a moment. If you feel the tugging of your heart, your heart is racing, and I believe personally that it's God just knocking on the door of your life and wanting to come into your life and bring peace and comfort, breathe life into you. If you want to invite Jesus into your life, you want to trust Him for salvation, just lift your hand today. I'd love to pray with you.